I filmed this video already, but the audio file was corrupted, so hopefully that just means I have an opportunity to not cry this time. Hey friends, it's Ren. Remember when this was a book channel? <laughs> I promise we'll get back to that as soon as I regain literacy. I'm still nine books ahead in my Goodreads goal. The time to panic is not now. It's probably gonna be December 1st when I'm 15 books behind on my Goodreads goal, but that's not gonna happen. For now, I wanna talk about something that has been, as they say, living rent-free in my mind. I've actually been paying it to live in my mind. Shout out to Patreon. And as you've probably guessed from the title of this video, assuming you read it, is that this thing that I'm talking about is the Penumbra Podcast. A podcast? you might say in surprise if you haven't been following me on Twitter for the past month. I really have no perception of the general public view of podcasts and like what they are. I just know that most people have been surprised that I have felt strongly enough about one that I willingly use the word simp on Twitter. So. so the Penumbra podcast is something that's referred to as an audio drama podcast. So they tell a story purely through audio means. Um, and through this one in particular, a full cast and incredible sound design. The Penumbra podcast has a few one-shot stories, but the ones that they mainly focus on are the Second Citadel, Tales from the Second Citadel, and the Juno Steel series. I love Second Citadel, it's great, but this video is mostly, almost entirely really, I don't know who I'm trying to play here, going to be focused on the Juno Steel series and really mostly Juno Steel himself because it is the one that just fucked my shit up pretty permanently. <laughs> to give you a brief synopsis, the Juno Steel series is a sort of science fiction detective noir that is set on Mars. And if you are either a longtime friend of mine or a longtime watcher of this channel, or you just saw this video, you may be surprised to hear that one of my top three new favorite stories of all time is science fiction. Considering I <laughs> pretty vehemently hate nearly every science fiction story that I come across. Literally, I'm just as surprised as you are. <laughs> First off, I wanna just start by saying this is not gonna be like a critical analysis or even really a review. I consider taking it from that angle and I still might at some point. I might make another video or I might touch on it a little bit in this one. Might, really strongly might make another video. I just wanna talk about audio drama podcasts, okay? I. I'm in a whirlwind right now. I'm in a spiral, especially with this one, clearly. <laughs> but anyway, I just don't think that I am capable right now in my like relationship with this podcast to talk about it in any sort of critical way. I'm still kind of in the honeymoon phase and the euphoria it gives me just kind of obliterates any critical thinking skills I have. <laughs> and euphoria might seem like a dramatic word. And first of all, it probably is because I'm me, but it also kind of really does encompass what this podcast makes me feel. I have never really come across a piece of media that has taken root so strongly and firmly in every part of me, which again, very dramatic, sounds very earth shattering. I am a person who is just generally enthusiastic about the things that I like. I love things very loudly, passionately, you know, joyfully, openly. I really just like things a lot. Everything, when I start listening to it and realize that I like it, suddenly becomes my favorite thing. But if you hyperfixate on stuff in the same way that I do, you might know the sensation of engaging with a new piece of media, a new story, and as you get further and further into it, you start to realize, oh, this one is different. <laughs> And I feel that way about Juno Steel. Okay, I'm trying to make this coherent while also trying not to cry, which is really just my own set of Herculean, Herculean, Herculean tasks. <laughs> but that actually leads me into the alleged framework of this video, which is three things that I didn't know existed or happened in the real world until I listened to the Juno Steel series. The first thing is bursting into tears. As I have established about three and a half seconds ago, am just a crier. I'm a crier of a person, um, but usually it's not like a sobbing kind of cry. It's not a burst into tears kind of cry. It's my eyes get delicately wet, 
tears flow daintily down my cheeks. Like I'm just like very silent. My MO basically is usually not sobbing and it's usually a buildup, you know, like I'll be more and more emotional slowly and then finally I will hit a breaking point and cry. So generally I thought that like when people said that they burst into tears or if I read that in a book, that was an exaggeration. I have literally burst into tears twice while listening to this podcast. And I mean literally as in one second, my eyes were dry. The next second, tears all- my whole face is wet. Even my forehead, don't know how that happens. This podcast just fucking grinds you down. It lulls you into a false sense of security with Juno's just stupid, just stupid inner monologue half the time. His dumb lines. And then it just guts you. (laughs) To be fair, it- does stab you in the front like it sets it all up it doesn't come out of nowhere and really you kind of know at least I kind of knew somewhere in my lizard brain that this was probably gonna happen but at the same time you just don't even really notice until it's too late and you're, if you're me, crying at work. <laughs> and let's talk about the voice acting, okay? Joshua Elon plays Juno Steele and he fucking delivers. And I am delivered. A fucking vocal baptism, if you will. <laughs> Seriously, he provides like the perfect mix of vulnerability and just like goofiness, but also he's all just a wreck. Uh, and I love that. It's just the perfect mix of traits that make up Juno Steel that is delivered so beautifully by Joshua Elon. And don't get me started on fucking Noah Syme. I am a Peter Nareo of Ho through and through. I can't, I, I, I can't help it. Partially because Noah fucking Symes destroys me every time. He's not even in it as much as I think that he is, but it feels like he is because his presence is so large. Are we ju- he just devours every fucking li- If I get on this tangent, I will not get off. Point blank, this fucking emotionally wrecks me. Moving on. So the next thing that I didn't know existed is actually good and nuanced gender rep. Now, for reasons that will become apparent very soon, this is the one thing that I am most in danger of crying during. So sorry if this starts to look like a bad YouTuber apology. I'm actually not that sorry. You guys, I'm I'm emotional. This is what you signed up for. <laughs> so the world of Juno Steel is, from my understanding, pretty entirely gender inclusive slash sexuality inclusive, whatever that may mean for the specific individual. Juno Steel, for example, is non-binary. He uses he, him pronouns, but he is referred to as a lady by others and by himself. So in a moment of out of character levels of earnestness, Um, I have a complicated relationship with gender, specifically my own, which is probably going to be made fairly obvious in the next five minutes or so. It's not really something that I want to like lay all out in a YouTube video, mostly because I think that my therapist would be mad at me. (laughs) But like, I feel like it is important context to have going into this. I grew up in the Midwest and I still live in the Midwest. And there aren't, at least in my circles, very many conversations about gender outside of the sort of obvious binary conversations of like women's rights. So because of that, my scope of understanding when it came to gender identity was pretty limited and I had set sort of rules for myself if I wanted to exist outside of the gender binary based on sort of that limited scope of understanding of gender. So basically like what pronouns I was allowed to use, what gender terms I should be comfortable with, that sort of thing. I had it sort of set in my head of what was allowed if I was to even touch outside of the traditional two gender system, I guess. Hearing Juno Steele get called a lady I had to pause the podcast because I was just so blown away. And I realized as I was crying (laughs) that it was because I didn't know, it didn't occur to me that I might have a right to that kind of nuance. Fuck. (laughs) Like being referred to in exactly the way that I felt comfortable with regardless of regardless of what terms society paired together it 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 just didn't seem like a luxury that I deserve to be afforded that I that would have even occurred to me that I should be afforded but here was this character 
with, to be honest, <laughs> a lot of the same problems, I guess, that I have, a lot of the same thought patterns and a lot of the same behaviors. And people around him were calling him exactly, were referring to him in exactly how he identified. Even when he was a piece of shit, even when he was being mean, he was still afforded respect and called exactly what he wanted to be called, no questions asked. So other than me just absolutely loving this story to death, that aspect of it, the casual and nuanced but not at all subtle portrayal of, of gender diversity, I guess, and gender acceptance, that would be enough for the wealth of gratitude that I feel for this podcast. But they just keep delivering. I'm gonna take a break. Give me a second. I can't believe I went with a cat eye for this video. Top 10 fucking foolish decisions. <laughs> okay, let's move on, blessedly, to the final thing that I did not know existed before the Juno Steel podcast, and that is loving a character just as much as you want to murder them. Again, I'm talking about Juno Steele himself. <laughs> remember that tweet that was like, I still remember that tweet, like it's like a long forgotten ancient buried tweet. But the tweet that was like, fuck your comfort characters, what character stresses you the fuck out? Juno Steele somehow exists in both worlds for me. Season one, mostly stressful. <laughs> By the second season, I loved him so much, but he was still making decisions that made me want to kill him. And I think that this is a testament to the skill of, first and foremost, Sophie Kainer and uh, Kevin Vibert, who are the co-creators and the director and head writer, respectively. I already forgot which order I said their names in. And of course, Joshua Elon, who, again, voice actor, who I just screamed about not two minutes ago. <laughs> there was just enough emotional vulnerability and rawness and realness there that I couldn't fully lean into a murderous rage type feeling toward him. But also there was just enough dumb decision making and just enough foolish behaviors and behaviors, to be a little honest, that hit too close to home for me, <laughs> um, for me to just love him without any sort of reservations, I guess. The way I might love, say, Rita, another character from this podcast. It's honestly one of the most complex relationships that I've ever had with a character, and again, a testament to how well-written he is. He feels as real to me as someone that I might know, which, again, testament to uh, the abilities of everyone involved because I remember after the- I listened to the first episode for the first time and I almost gave up on it because I was like, these inner monologues are just unlistenable. <laughs> but look at me now. So those were the big things I want to talk about. I feel like I just talked so much, but I didn't even cover like half the things that I love about this. But I didn't even cover a third of the things that I love about this podcast. I didn't even really cover Peter Nereev, which as a self-confessed Nereev simp, that's kind of embarrassing of me. There's also a whole wealth of characters that I could also make a whole ass video about, but I promised that this video would be under 15 minutes. Honestly, every character is so interesting and well-developed. Seriously, I could just talk about this forever. I could write a thesis on Juno Steel. In fact, it, it sounds like something I would do. <laughs> really though, I just wanted to make this video to sort of share my love of it. For the people who don't know about it, um, or for the people who do and want to talk to me about it, I would love that. But also, I'm just like bursting at the seams, <laughs> I guess, with love for this series and I needed to, to get it out somehow. I also just want to express my undying gratitude to everyone who brings this podcast into existence. I'm literally just so overwhelmed with gratitude and joy that I was gonna say that something like this exists, but I don't even mean that. I mean this specifically. That this story, I'm gonna cry again, specifically exists in the world. It just, oh, it just bowls me over. So go listen to the Penumbra podcast. They say with tears streaming down their face. 
go do it now. <laughs> also, if you want to hear more of my ramblings about Penumbra and other podcasts, you can follow me at the Twitter that I had to make specifically because I had a friend text me and be like, you need to stop tweeting about podcasts. I don't want to see it anymore. Very lovingly. The Twitter is Juno Steel Writes. It's also linked below. Um, please talk to me about podcasts. I'm literally suffering because I don't have any podcast listening friends. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!